Okay. Hey, it's Chris. The Midwest Bass Hunter. Today uh, I have my daughter Liliana and we're going to go over how to rig um, soft plastic baits. Mostly uh, we'll be talking about worms. These are some, uh, some Cinco's. Um, so most of what we're going to go over is, is about that. I had uh, one of my subscribers and a, a friend of mine that I got into fishing asked me to explain these uh, different soft plastic rigs to him. So I said, hey, I'll do that. I'll just put a video on YouTube and uh, we'll do it that way. So um, first thing I want to talk about is hooks. So when you're, when you're fishing soft plastic baits for bass and any most other uh, species of fish, you're going to use what's called an offset hook or an offset extra wide gap hook. These are gamakatsu hooks. Um, I like them. They work pretty well. I like these hooks because they're not very thick. Okay, so you can get some really thick heavy duty hooks. In fact, I think I have one here. So this is a really thick hook. And um, this might be something that you would use if you're fishing in some heavy vegetation um, where you need to have this power. So you're not going to bend this hook. I mean, it is really thick. It's not going to bend. And then here's a, here's a similar hook that is, as you can see, a lot thinner gauge metal. So it's not going to be near as strong. But if you're fishing uh, where I fish, we don't have as much of that heavy, heavy cover up here in the Midwest. Uh, we do have lots of cover, and I do have these hooks for that very reason. But uh, most of the time, this hook will suffice. And the thinner diameter hook... Um, will actually hook the fish better because it's easier to pull this wire through the hook or through the fish than this big thick wire. One thing that's nice about most soft plastic baits is it will tell you right on the package what hook to use. So right here it says hook to use 5 eye um, offset extra wide gap hook. So it tells you to use basically this right here is a 5 eye extra wide gap hook. So that's the hook you use. Right here I have what's called the Texas rig. And so we've got a hook and we've got a bullet weight, a bullet sinker. And depending on who you talk to, you can either peg this sinker to keep it from moving around or uh, you can leave it free so that it, it can move. A lot of people use a bobber stop or um, there's other different ways you can peg your, peg your sinker, little pieces of rubber and stuff. I typically like to leave it unpegged so it can move around when you're fishing the bait. And so now I'll just show you how to put a worm on this hook. So basically what you're going to do uh, with this, you're going to take this, this hook facing down like this um, and you're going to poke it through the end of your worm and get about a quarter inch of the worm and pull it through just like that. And you're going to feed that up the shank of the hook over the offset po portion and then up over the knot just like that so you can see it's over the knot then what you want you want this bait to lay straight on that hook just like that okay so what you have to do is you have to put the the hook into the worm so sometimes this can take a little practice to get it just right and I hope I'll try not to mess it up here but you kinda move it upward a little bit so that you have some slack in it and then you uh, sink that hook into the worm. And the other thing you want to do is you kind of want to get the tip of that hook close to the edge of the worm. So that way when you set the hook on the fish, you can actually get that um, hook through the worm. Because when a fish eats this, he's going he's gonna to eat this. He's going to get it all in his mouth like this. And then he's gonna have that worm all bunched up, smashing it in his in his in his mouth, and you gotta be able to pull that hook through that worm that's all bunched up, and then through the fish's mouth. So you wanna have it close to the edge of the of the worm when it's rigged. And you want it to be straight. If it's nice and straight, it'll look good in the water, it'll look right, and um, you'll catch more fish that way. So that is your basic te Texas rig. So the second rig I want to talk about is probably the the most, uh, the second, in my opinion, probably the second most used rig, especially where I'm from, and that's the wacky rig. So there's a couple different ways you can do this, several different ways actually, and I'll just kind of show you what all those different ways are. 
when you're doing a wacky rig, you can use a bunch of different hooks, okay? So you can use this. This is a regular offset hook. I think it's like a, a two watt. It's kind of small. You can use this type of hook also. This is called a finesse wide gap. This is the one that I prefer to use. Um, it's a small hook. And then you can also just use a jig head. Just use a jig head. So the, the, the wacky rig is really simple. Uh, basically, you uh, can take your worm and you bend it in half. And where it's folded in half, and you run your hook through there about through the center of the worm. And there you go, now you have a wacky rig. Now you can do a lot of different things with this. You can put a weight in the end, in one end of the worm that makes it fall a certain way. Um, a lot of guys use finishing nails, um, actual an actual nail, a small nail for uh, doing finishing carpentry work. But then you can fish that and what happens is when this, when this um, falls through the water, it kind of does this type of motion. And it's a real, slow finesse type um, presentation. This works really good around here. Um, in fact, Liliana has caught a fish on video <laughs> on our channel using this exact method right here. This, this same uh, jig head and this uh, wacky rig worm. And so when you use a jig head, it will fall a little bit faster because it has some weight on it. So it'll cause it to fall a little bit faster. And if you use a hook, uh, basically you use, do the same exact thing. Fold it in half, run it through there, and then there you go. There are some other things you can do. You can use O-rings uh, with this. I've done a video on that in the past. I'll put a link in the description. But you can uh, use some O-rings on this. There's a, a cool trick I learned that you can use to save your worms so you don't use as many worms, um, which is helpful because, hey, worms are not free. So. That's your, your basic wacky rig, and like I said, you can use any hook. So the next one I want to talk about is something that um, I'm just learning how to do. I haven't really done this um, much in, in my life, but it's called a, a shaky head. So you have a jig head, and um, you have either, I've, done, I've seen them in a couple different ways, where you just have a round jig head, and you actually just feed the worm on, and then you kind of put it sideways. See if I can do it on this one. And you just go over the, the little bait keeper like that. Now this jig's pretty small, so this would be the wrong jig for this. But that is your shaky head. So when like it, it falls, it's gonna go uh, jig head down and the tail's gonna go up. Uh, but I like this setup. This is a, a different type of shaky head. Um, and it's basically, it's got this little spring, or this little bait keeper on it. So you just kinda, it's like a, a, a screw basically you just screw your it's a, actually it's called a screw lock and uh, they use them a lot on like swim bait hooks and stuff like that and then you just feed it on twist it onto that and then um, hook it with uh, through the body with the hook just like a Texas rig and it's kind of like Lily said it's kind of like a Texas rig but it's on a jig head so this is a real good finesse tactic as well um, and you can use different worms with this. You can use like a trick worm. Um, I just use this since I have it. I've already kind of chewed it up a little bit, but you can use this and it's real good to fish around structure like uh, like docks and stuff like that or boat, uh, boat slips or anything like that. And then it just kind of will sit down on the bottom and it'll go that way first and then the worm will kind of do its thing up here. So these are these are pretty... Uh, pretty good. I see a lot of guys catch fish on them and um, it's a real good way to catch fish that are, are kind of finicky. Um, so this is something I haven't done a lot with but I'm going to fish a lot more with this this year. Um, next one I would probably say um, is the uh, what's called the drop shot rig and this is going to be a little bit hard to see but so I've got a hook and it's on a line and basically you tie a polymer knot and then you run it a certain you run your line through the hook a certain way and that causes your hook to stand up on on the edge like this like I said I'm not going to go through that in this video I will uh, if, if anyone wants throw a, throw a, a comment out there on how to how to do this and I'll just do a video strictly on the drop shot and um, show you how to do that but with this so you you, you have your line um, hanging off the bottom of your hook and that's going to be where you put your sinker and they make a special kind of sinker for this called it's called a drop shot sinker 
and it doesn't really have, you don't really tie your line to the sinker. Uh, so with this, it has like this, um, I don't know what you call it, this different opening on the top of this uh, drop shot weight. But basically what you do is you just <coughs> pull the line up into that and it, it will just stay there. Now the, the, the reason you want to do this, have this type of weight, you can, I've fished a drop shot before with just an, like a, like an acorn shaped sinker with the old, uh, you know, metal swivel on it. And you can do that and it'll work just fine. But if you, if you snag this in a rock or something, this, this, this sinker, with this type of sinker, what'll happen is it'll just come off of there or it'll break the line right there and it uh, prevents you from losing the whole rig. So with this rig, I like to use a trick worm. You can use a lot of different worms though. I mean, you can use a, a Cinco or whatever. And basically what you do, and this is kind of a big trick worm. You could do this with a four inch trick worm. This is a seven inch, it's a little big, but, um, and these work great on shaky head too. Basically, you're gonna take that worm and you're gonna feed the, the hook right through the, the end of the worm, basically like this. And it's kind of funny looking, but, so what'll happen is this will stand up in the water like this. I don't know if you can see that very well. It'll kind of stand out, straight out. And it'll be a real finesse style and uh, a real slow and subtle presentation that um, works really good. It's really good for smallmouth bass. A lot of guys use it for smallmouth bass. I'm sure um, if you're watching fishing videos on YouTube, you've probably seen all kinds of guys on TV catching uh, tons and tons of smallmouth bass with this with this exact setup so that is the shaky or i'm sorry the drop shot rig and the last rig i'm going to talk about is the uh, carolina rig i don't know if you can even see it all so basically i've got a hook i've got a liter of line and this one is about a foot and a half maybe 18 inches then i've got a swivel and then in front of this in front of the swivel to the line that would be going to my reel I have a, a bead and I have a, uh, an egg sinker. Now you don't necessarily have to have the bead, but if you have that bead, it uh, makes a little bit more no noise when it's going through the water and that just kind of helps it uh, attract more fish. So this rig um, you can use with pretty much any kind of bait. It's a really good rig for like the summertime. You just kind of drag it along the bottom. You don't have to do much to it. You, uh, just reel up some slack and drag it along the bottom. Um, and you, a lot of times you can fish really big baits with it, like 10 inch worms. Like sometimes I'll do that. I'll fish a 10 inch worm with this. Um, but basically you can fish it with anything. I'm just going to put the sink on here to show you what it looks like, but, um, it works good with big baits. So just like the Texas rig, just run it through the end of the worm get about a, a quarter inch or three-eighths of an inch of the worm and come out through the side, run it up over your knot just like that and then hook it through the body of the worm. And same deal, you wanna have that worm straight on here. So basically here's what it looks like. And like I said, I don't know if you can see all that in the frame, but that's your basic Carolina rig. And you can make this leader as long as you want. I've seen guys fishing with leaders that were like three and four foot long. You don't want to do that from the shore. If you're fishing from the shore, stick with a two foot or less leader. It works good. Uh, I've caught some of the biggest fish I've ever caught was uh, was with this rig, and like a seven or eight inch um, ribbon tail worm. So it works good, and you can use it for uh, you know a lot of different applications. So that's um, that's what I have today for uh, for this video. Hopefully it helps you help you guys out. Um, hopefully, I'm sure it will help my friend uh, my friend out who asked me to do this video. So he'll be out catching some fish on these rigs soon, I'm sure. So um, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and uh, leave a comment if you'd like to see any other uh, any other different uh, instructional videos or anything like that. And uh, have a great day. We'll see you next time.